everybody, Chris here. I'm going to show you some comic books that are from the 6th and yeah, 6th and 13th of <coughs> April. These are the books that I received in the mail from Horizon Comics. And um, I'll just give you my uh, quick thoughts on them. Um, uh, Incredible Hulks, this one, pretty good, I think. Um, nice suit, Hulk wearing a um, unstable molecule suit that's able to expand with him. Um, anyway, so this is kind of the start of the uh, lover's quarrel sort of thing where Hulk is trying to get back with uh, his wife, Betty, and she, you know, kind of freaks out. It goes on a rampage. She ends up at a party with an old arch enemy, um, Tyrannus, the lord of sub, yeah, the sub, sub, whatever area, underground stuff. <laughs> and um, kind of like a, a mole character. Um, but not as stinky, probably. <laughs> but yeah, good issue, I think. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next one, and the cover of the next one looks really, really cool. Um, so as for a Hulk comic goes, pretty good. I'd, I'd say it's a pretty cool pickup, especially for this this arc happening will be pretty cool. Fear itself, this is the best cover out of all the variants, actually. I like the... Um, for how much some of the variants were, even though they were kind of cool, I still thought the uh, regular cover was the best. Um, but great stuff, I think. You know, Sin's got this um, crazy hammer that her father found a long time ago, and they didn't know how to pick it up or whatever. So anyway, Sin's got it. A lot of crazy stuff's going to happen. Um, Thor gets beat down. Asgardians are going to leave. And some other hammers... I guess are going to be uh, summoned for for other persons who are worthy um, and probably to go against sin. So fear itself, um, all the stuff I heard is great, and I definitely agree. Fear itself is a pickup. Journey into mystery, which was I guess previously Thor, and they're relaunching the Thor title, but naming this one Journey into Mystery and keeping the um, Thor numbering six two two mostly focused around uh, Loki and um, kind of getting a message from himself um, and you see uh, he's kind of starting to get back into being the the trickster that he is um, and at the end of this one is basically the same end as uh, Fear Itself book one where Thor is getting beat down and the, the uh, Asgardians are leaving. Great artwork, um, love it, Braith Wait. Um, and as I see here, they have uh, typoed his name on the front. They have uh, Braith Waith, and I, I think it is correct that it's Braith Waith, I believe. So I think for the um, artist, that kind of sucks. You know, he's credited correctly in the uh, inside in the indie share or whatever. <laughs> but uh, but Braith Waith on the cover, and that's kind of a, a tongue twister. Uh, Fear itself issue that you should just leave alone is Fear itself the home front. Issue 1 of 7, this is just a lot of um, short stories, and they're going to have 7 issues of all these short stories of happenings around Fear Itself. I think the timing of Fear Itself, some kind of have a relation to, some don't. And especially the Speedball one, the first one, the Speedball one, that's the one just made me just, no, I'm sick of Speedball and him being so tired and, or uh, still, what do you call it? Um... Feeling sorry, of course, what he did, which he should, or that he was a part of. I mean, and it was actually Nitro who blew up Sanford, not him. But they're saying because of his actions is what led Nitro to do what he did. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just I'm just tired of it, though. And, and now he's not Penance. And he also has ties, I guess, to Avengers Academy, which I really didn't like. So, just blah. All these short stories, um, um, it's not going to happen for me because I don't think it's going to have any big, huge effects. Um, surrounding Fear Itself, so I'm not going to pick them up. And when I used to have the money, I would buy absolutely every single um, tie-in, absolutely. But um, I don't have the money, and I don't think these little short stories are going to have a huge effect on Fear Itself, so I'm not going to purchase them. So I don't think, uh, for you guys, I'd say you guys, you don't need that one. Amazing Spider-Man 658, really love the cover. I don't know if there's any different um, variants, but really super good cover. This is an issue, an adventure with the FF. They are going through these different, I think it's three different um, time corrections or whatever they have to do, or splits in 
in the, you know, the time uh, continuity or whatever it is. There's even future time travel, um, which I'm kind of sick of right now. There's so much time travel and a lot of stuff that I'm I'm not into and I'm hating it. And every, every time I see something with time travel, I'm like, jeez, it's another time travel thing. Man, just let's stick with current stuff right now. Um, but the artwork, it seems kind of classic, but, I don't know, kind of not enjoyable to me. I don't know how it is. I just kind of like that more that classic look on old paper and old books. Uh, putting it on here and so heavily inked and so clean, it's it doesn't feel like an old book as much so. Um, and the story is kind of a neat adventure with them, but it pretty fell kind of flat for me. So not the best um, FF and Spidey tie-in. Um, I don't know. It's 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 just there for me. It's part of it. You know, you have to touch on FF in the Spider-Man world. Um, but I don't know. It had its little I don't know problems. I guess like like Peter complaining about the costume in this one, and he didn't seem to have a problem with it in the in the last one, and he left the costume there. Mr. Fantastic called him, and then they go, oh, here's your suit, you left it here last time. Why would Parker leave his new suit? He just gets into the FF, something that he's tried to do since Spider-Man, you know, issue number one, and he just leaves his costume there. <laughs> I know, it's kind of silly. Um, so, you, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to continue. It was just kind of fell flat for me, that's all. But I don't think it was not at all a retelling of um, FF number one or whatever. It was very different. I mean, it happens after... Uh, FF number one, and they have this other little turn. So, so if you like the FF stuff and you're not collecting the Spider-Man stuff though, and you want to get all the stories of FF, you probably want to get that one. Okay, Carnage issue number uh, four of five. Great cover with Doppelganger and uh, Carnage with Iron Man's mask on. Really great issue. Loved it. Um, you get Spider-Man fighting the Carnage with these. I don't know, he, he pulls in like these bodies, these dead bodies, uh, guards. Um, he just becomes this huge monster. Uh, that is really cool. Um, and you have uh, supposedly a new spawn of carnages in the arm of the psychiatrist of Shriek. And uh, the psychiatrist eventually rips that arm off. Shriek gets it at the end and uh, it's on her and kind of up half of her face. So, really solid issue. I'm loving this Carnage stuff. He's back. Um, and you find out some, some information on how, like, what happened to him when he got ripped in half. Um, you know, when Sentry flew him up into space and ripped him in half. But, yeah, really solid issue. Awesome artwork by uh, Crane. Beautiful stuff. If you guys haven't picked up the series yet, I think you should. It's great. If you have anything, you know, if you like the Spider-Man or Carnage and kind of like the anti-hero stuff and whatnot, or or if you've even played the game, you know, like Maximum Carnage <laughs> back in the day, um, you're probably a fan anyways of Spider-Man, Venom, and Carnage, but definitely a great pickup. Uh, if you haven't got it now, probably a trade paperback. Anyways, this is Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine 5 of 6. Everything that's happening, all their time travel and messed up stuff that's happening to Spider-Man and Wolverine is all Mojo's fault. I don't like Mojo. I think he's stupid um, and just too slapsticky. Some kind of neat, funny stuff, fights happen in this. Um, but it's this series, this whole thing has just been there. Um, another time travel thing that I think is just freaking bothers me so much. Time travel with Spider-Man... We're here with the Avengers, you got time travel with the FF, just time travel, time travel, time travel. I'm sick of it. It's it just it's become too norm um right now. I don't I don't like that. So anyways it bothers me. Um there's only one more issue. Um and that's that. I'm gonna have it. But uh after this, anything astonishing title on it, I am not picking up. Another title that I soon won't be picking up is Wolverine the Best There Is. There is one more issue, well I hope there's only one more issue of this story arc. Um, so I have up, I'll have up to issue number six and just end this, this stupid comic book. Um, and all I gotta say is, uh, although you do, this one is not too too bad, but the whole overall Wolverine the Best There Is thing has been really stupid. Um, and nobody has really been liking it. Um, so it's 
quite a thing for it to continue <laughs> on. And hopefully maybe they end it after this storyline because sales are probably trash. But I got an issue. But anyways, you kind of learn a lot of, uh, you know, plot developments in here and whatnot. And there's some, you know, s you know, sneaky sneaky and slash slash kind of stuff. But even the one big-brained character in here, the kid that Wolverine is supposed to be saving, he even mentions how stupid he is. How stupid he is. You know, he's swearing. And, and it's bothering me, too. Right, parental discretion advised. And, you know, in here they still cover up all the swears. Like, it's just... Just a lot of things about this comic book is stupid. Um, but the kid just mentions how stupid Wolverine is in here. And I know he's been tortured so much, but... You know, and his brain might not be quite clear, but Wolverine is much better than... Uh, he's being portrayed in here. So, don't pick up Wolverine the best there is. A comic book Wolver with Wolverine to pick up, though, is Uncanny X-Force. It's been unbelievably awesome. Rick Remender's writing in here. Um, this concludes the, um, the, uh, war, uh, Deathlock story, and, uh, I think it is, uh, anyways, they go into the world, uh, Phantom X expands it, they go into the world, they kill the guy so that they can end this Deathlock future so the Deathlocks won't come and kill them, um, and it's just kind of neat, the, the world, I guess, I didn't know this, has, uh, it's kind of like the home laboratory to, um, Weapon X, so it, the world has ties to Phantom X and Wolverine and Deadpool. So that's kind of cool, that information. But the big thing, the big shocker at the end of this... Uh, sorry. The big shocker at the end of this book is you find out basically their, uh, their apocalypse problem is not exactly ended. Uh, so really great shocker, really great art, really good um, storytelling. Beautiful, um, beautiful book. And the X-Men one that is just kind of there for me, but um, I'd give it a, a you know, mid-grade. Um, it's it's touching back on stuff that uh, happened in uh, a Break World story arc that I wasn't collecting X-Men then. But anyways, from what I can tell, it's um, the story where Kitty... Um, where she stopped that big giant bullet and she got, she phased it and she's been flying out into space. So anyways, they're touching back on that um, stuff. And Sword, the green-haired lady that is supposed to be the Beast's girlfriend, she calls the X-Men to help them because she think this um, like military armada is coming to attack. Um, but it turns out they're just um, looking for asylum and help from their big leader of the Colossus. Um, so it's it's a good issue, I'd say. I understood it. I didn't have any really problems with it. So with this issue, it was good storytelling that I was able to kind of understand what was and what they're, uh, you know, going to be leading into. So and hopefully at the end, Kitty Pride gets herself all fixed up and she's not in her constant uh, phased state and she gets to be normal. So I'd say it's a pretty good issue of Uncanny X-Men, but for me it's just kind of, it's just kind of there, but... Uh, I understand it, and no, no problems, no problems, no problemo. Here's one I really, really love this cover. Like this is, I, I don't think the camera's going to do it much justice here, but it really does have this beautiful, um, like photorealistic look. I mean, the the metal, the skin, the lighting, it just looks absolutely beautiful. I'm not even sure who. Uh, does the cover here? Maybe I can. But yeah, brilliant stuff, brilliant artwork. Um, let's take a look, shall we? But the uh, stuff with Scar in the Savage Land is pretty amazing. Look, I'm punching out uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, let's see. Williams is writer, penciler. Blah, blah, blah. Cover. Michael Michael Comark. And there's a variant cover by Billy Tan. I don't think I even saw what that one looked like. So I guess this cover is Michael Comart. And it would, I guess pencils and colors would be uh, by him. But super brilliant. Um, so that's Scar and um, Kazar. So this is issue number one of five. Scar, King of the Savage Land. And this is continuing basically from one of the last Hulk comics where... They had a, uh, 
a tale in the um, Savage Land, and Scar decides to stay there for a while and has an adventure there. <clears throat> um, I can't remember what much happens. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm just doing this on a. just flying through this, you know. Just put my son down for a nap, dog's in the kennel, and I'm just doing this, so. Totally unprepared, man! <clears throat> so, you get this devil dinosaur at the end. If you can see that. But his, it's him just doing his thing, getting accustomed to um, being in the jungle. And he's trying to get this... What was it? He was trying to wrestle down a dinosaur, and then he has kind of a fight with the dinosaur, falls into this hole, and this... Um, a uh, giant robot is is way down there, and he's kind of freaking out, going, "Holy heck!" You know, it's supposed to be dinosaurs here, not robots. And um, then out of that, I guess, comes this this devil dinosaur or something like that, or no, this um, this red mist. There's something down there that the robot was protecting. This red mist comes down, and then um, Kazar's wife becomes a uh, a host of this entity. So, it looks like it's going to be really, really cool. Um, this one was a uh, Secret Avengers. This one I couldn't get on my last uh, haul. But this is the variant I picked up. I didn't get any regulars or whatever. Um, but this is the um, 70th anniversary uh, variant. and Which is probably the most appropriate out of the variants. I only have the other variant that I have is... Uh, Wolverine issue number seven with the Captain America variant, but this one is the most appropriate Captain America variant I've seen since Secret Avengers is a Captain America or Steve Rogers variant, or title, sorry. Um, but just really cool, him in the old costume, and Beast is in it. I don't think um, Black Widow was in this issue, though. But really cool variant. This one cost me only eight bucks. Um, really nice stuff, so, yeah. Secret Secret Avengers is really amazing. I don't know who does the cover though. Yeah, I'll have to find that out. Um, I don't think the I don't think it's Dio Dada. It might be, it might not be. But it doesn't really look like Dio Dada's uh, stuff. It's somebody else, I think. I think this is the same artist who was working on some of the Astonishing X Men stuff, which was pretty fantastic, but. Astonishing X-Men knife. I really don't have come not to like it all. Um, so yeah, really beautiful cover. I can't even remember what uh, goes on in this issue, actually. So I'm just going to move on because it's an old issue, but really cool variant. And we have BPRD, The Dead and Remembered, basically going in uh, a story back in time with... Um, Elizabeth Sherman and uh, Professor Broom. So that's kind of cool. Um, just going back, and you might be able to see some of her past and um, and whatnot. So you can never go wrong with uh, BPRD. Um, but boy, oh boy, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm just waiting for the new Hellboy stuff to come out where he's back at the BPRD. I've been expecting that so long. But uh, yeah, really cool tale with uh, Professor Broom and Elizabeth Sherman. So filling in. Um, some of her past adventures, but some of her past history, some of her past or origin. So that's going to be really cool. And then we got the last one here, Spawn, issue number 206. Great cover by uh, Kredensky. And um, what have we got him here? Basically, a lot of fighting in this one. Um, him fighting against the uh, these, like, hell vampires or whatever the heck they are. They're really old vampires. Um, so I know Chris... Um, in New York, Dark Avenger uh, C86, he's been saying a lot of build-up, a lot of talk, not seeing a lot of spawn. Well, in this one, you definitely get to see a lot of spawn and a lot of uh, action in this one. Um, and I'd say basically that little bit of plot development, but mostly um, getting into this this fight. And I don't think there was much of um, anything else other than that, really. Um, just take a quick look. Yeah, and then at the end here you get uh, um, Twitch. He comes in to uh, talk to um, Jim Downing, but at first he thinks it's it's Al, and obviously he finds out that it's not. So 
what's going to happen with Al because he was threatening him. He says, you know, get out of here. I'm going to or I'm going to kill you. Um, that's what Downing was saying. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But really great. Um, I like where this um, whole spawn stuff is going. Um, um, really nice though. Um, yeah, so that's about that. That's the comics that I got. I'm still waiting for, I think, two more comic book packages. And it'll have some other comic books I picked up for the weeks of uh, the 6th and the 13th. When those get here, I'll show you those. Yeah, okay, so you guys, so that's about it for uh, all the comics for now until I get some new stuff in the mail. But uh, I just want to just quickly share some other requirements with you. Um, let's see, well, actually, first I'll show you guys this, the Wolverine Particle Sun. This is not actually a, a requ um, an requirement, but a, um, a sale that I want to offer you guys. For 10 bucks, you can own this uh, manga version version of Wolverine. It's all in the, uh, uh, you know, black and white manga style. It does read left to right, not, you know, right to left, but... It's this manga story and origin of Wolverine. Uh, it was interesting, but uh, kind of done with it. Never will read it again. So if you guys want to get that, um, ten bucks and plus whatever the shipping is to your area. A thing that I had to I had to spend some points at uh, Nintendo.com because um, some points I guess of mine were going to expire. So I just went on there, purchased something uh, with my free points. And uh, there's this nice uh, Mario tote bag. I thought this was one of the best out there so far. So big flap and then got uh, the Velcro large pouch. Seems like it'd be very good for, for carrying a lot of stuff. Comics and X. show you guys a little closer too. I got these cups from 7-Eleven. And these are to promote the Thor movie. So I got these Slurpee cups. I got one Slurpee and then I just bought the cups. <laughs> so there's... Uh, Destroyer, so you see it just kind of flashes back and forth on the other side. There you go, he's shooting his thing. And we have here a Loki. He's got a spear. And I'm really hoping to go see um, Thor in 3D. Get some. There we go. I think that'll be really cool, and it's one of the first um, Marvel movies that are going to be presented in 3D. So I'm hopefully going to go see that uh, May 8th. I'm, I'm really hoping I'm going to try to do that. Try to get some advanced tickets. Uh, and the last thing, things I'll show you here. Uh, my wife, she went out to uh, get some stuff, and she went to the video store, or, or... Yeah, she went to the video store, renting some movies. She knew I was kind of interested in, in picking up the uh, original Tron, um, and I watched it. It was fairly good, I think. Um, really, you know, it was definitely 80s, um, and it did have a, a uh, Disney feel to it, I think. Um, and horrible, kind of some horrible acting and horrible effects as we see them now, but it's really great for uh, the nostalgia um, and I think kind of probably in its in its time, it was ahead of its time, um, if you know what I mean. It was probably more than anybody was uh, kind of used to, um, but it did get a lot of uh, cult following. So it's really fun, I think, for me to pick up this, you know, this 80s movie, and I really enjoyed the new one. Um, so having them both is, is really cool, um, and just, I, I'd always, like, I'd known of Tron and kind of what it was, but not, not really, um, so, yeah, it was, it was neat, I enjoyed it, she's, Nikki wasn't, <laughs> she thought it was just hor so horrible, and she's like, I almost spent how many dollars on this, uh, so, but I think you love, it was really good, I enjoyed it, um, yeah. So another one we picked up here was the two disc Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy of The Incredibles. The Incredibles is an amazing, I think, Disney movie, Disney Pixar movie, um, as the Tron stuff was. Uh, really great to have in the collection. First time ever released on uh, Blu-ray. I think it's the first time ever, but The Incredibles is an awesome superhero film. I think uh, I think most of the people in our, our comic community here would would probably agree. I hope you do anyways. It was really cool having this uh, 
family of superheroes presented like this, and Pixar is usually really incredibly awesome with their movies, so happy to get this. Um, and also, in my next video, I want to show you guys a uh, really cool connection, I think, between uh, Disney Incredibles and um, the new FF. And I think it's also an interesting connection because this would be a Disney-owned franchise. And this is Marvel, but Disney owns Marvel. So, anyways, you'll see what I'm talking about in my next video. A really cool connection between Incredibles and uh, FF. So, that's it for you guys for now. See you guys later. Bye.